Good morning. I'm Ken Kroken. Welcome to Genesis Sunday. Today we're going to be spending some time looking at post-acute care services in the Quad City region with a uh, special focus on services uh, designed and centered around senior citizens. So welcome Glenn Roebuck. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. Good. I just said the bad word, didn't I? We don't call people senior citizens anymore. Well, you know what's interesting? Uh, some people <clears throat> bristle at the term of being a senior and mm. other people embrace it. Uh huh. Uh, as, as people continue to age, you know, we often make fun of the things that make us most uncomfortable. Right, and, and yeah. goodness knows we, make, we, we, we tease about <laughs> growing older or forgetting something or what have you. But what, what I'm really beginning to see is I work with more seniors in the community mm. uh, uh, in a preemptive manner mm. who are healthier and looking to stay healthy, mm -hmm. is that they really begin to embrace this different time mm. of their lives. Well, you know, I've noticed that, that just culturally, the baby boomers and their parents are nothing alike as they age. Um, our, our parents just accepted aging and when things went wrong, they shrugged their shoulders and said, eh, it's that time, you know? But the baby boomers fight every inch of the way, you know, the, they, they still want to play tennis and run marathons and uh, do things. Uh, it's just a very different mindset from one generation to the next. Well, and I think if you look at some of the, some of the uh, recreation and travel and leisure activities mm -hmm. that have literally been created around mm -hmm. a senior population, we're seeing people that are able to travel more mm -hmm. and longer mm -hmm. because people are living longer and living more healthily. Yeah. Um, we see... Uh, paddle board games that didn't mm -hmm. exist 10 years ago and now there are senior leagues that people pickleball. enjoy. Pickleball. That's what, that's what I was talking about. Pickleball. <laughs> pickleball. And, and pickleball is hot. You can't get a pickleball court. <laughs> the city of Davenport is building pickleball courts. You know, who would have yeah. thought that would happen? <laughs> well, it, it's, um, it is interesting. Uh, my clear recollection being a boy was that most men retired at age 50, 55, that, that time frame, and many of them died within 10 years of their retirement. So that they were gone by 65, generally cardiac issues, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But as you say, today we're living seemingly forever. Well, we've certainly reached a point where some health habits or maybe poor health habits mm -hmm. of 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago have kind of extinguished themselves. Mm -hmm. For example, smoking. No pun intended, extinguishing. Exactly. <laughs> so for example, there's not near the smoking volume mm -hmm. that there used to be. Um, the, the people are generally more attuned to nutrition and eating mm -hmm. better. There's more people that exercise today. When I grew, I grew up with older parents, mm -hmm. and th that the concept of exercising wasn't even part of their vocabulary. Yeah. Yeah. And now, it, it, when, when today's students mm -hmm. leave high school and go to college, one of the first things that they look for, and one of the big investments that colleges are making, is in student yeah. gymnast or student athletic services, not for the athletes, for the common students. Right, yeah. So our whole mm -hmm. mechanism around that has, has mm -hmm. changed and, and it, it impacts everything we do in society. Well, you know, I, and again, I think that our parents grew up with parents for whom life was physically demanding enough that no one had to exercise. You know, people were walking great distances and farming and uh, you know, it was a it was a physically demanding lifestyle, well, and then it all changed. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned that. I had the chance to vacation last week, and I was mm -hmm. in an urban setting in the United States, and we didn't rent a car, so we walked every day. Right. We walked ten miles a day mm -hmm. for five straight days yeah. in two different cities. Felt fabulous. Yeah. I have to work for five days to walk the number of, of miles and steps I did in a, in one day. Yeah. Last exactly. Week. So. There are those differences, mm -hmm. I think you're right. It's important to remember in 1965 when Medicare and Medicaid came on and people received the Medicare and Medicaid, or Medicare, excuse me, benefit right. at 65, the average life expectancy in the United States was 69. Yeah. Um, 65, you're mm -hmm. warming up for another 15 to 20 years of fun before you even think about right. slowing down. No, I mean, 70 was an old guy. Exactly. You know, exactly. well, not so much. I, I always love when the media contacts us, and, or when we reach out to the media friends from time to time, mm -hmm. and we have uh, someone we're caring for who is turning 100. Mm -hmm. And they say, yeah, you know, not so much big news anymore. Yeah. <laughs> 
not such a big deal. Yeah. Well, listen, let's get back on track. What the heck is post-acute care? It's a great question. When we talk about post-acute care, it's the health services that people receive often after an acute stay or after a hospitalization. What's important to remember, however, is it doesn't have to be after you've been hospitalized. Mm -hmm. People can engage in home care services, whether that's supportive care or even medical care in their home to avoid a hospitalization in the first place. Right. That their physician can order home health services. We have palliative care services, which are designed to help people who are living with chronic diseases and live most comfortably and most successfully. Mm -hmm. We can engage in those services before someone's in the mm -hmm. hospital as well. Well, and I think the, the, the revolution um, aspect of this is when people are coming out of hospitals, the focus on maintaining their recovery at home rather than go to the hospital, go home, get worse, come back to the hospital. Exactly. Um, if we could reduce the number of hospital stays, uh, what a major impact this would have on the cost of health care. Well, absolutely. And interestingly enough, we've, part of our post-acute strategy has been to develop clear partnerships mm -hmm. with local skilled nursing facilities mm -hmm. in this manner to enhance and reduce readmissions, to reduce the amount of times people need to come mm -hmm. to the emergency room. And through that endeavor, we have had great success in reducing readmissions to the hospital, mm -hmm. great success in reducing emergency department visits. We've also been able to reduce the number of people who need skilled services at mm -hmm. all. And even in our small, small-ish, if you will, community, mm -hmm. we've saved millions of dollars in Medicare expenditures yeah. by reducing this need. The, you know, the days of someone needing long-term care in a nursing home for two, three, or four years are really gone. Yeah. We're seeing people for four, five, or six mm -hmm. months and in many cases not seeing patients needing that level of service at all. As you're aware, we have a, an apartment building in Silva, mm -hmm. it's called Crosstown Square, dedicated to serving seniors. Average age there is, is around or near 90 years of age, and yeah. these are independently active, alert people enjoying life. Newlyweds. In, in some, some cases, cases. newlyweds, yeah. that's right. We had a couple <laughs> newlyweds this year. So. What's interesting is many of them do not require a higher level of care mm -hmm. later in life. They, have, they truly age in place within their apartment. They may receive some additional services yeah. before they pass, but they don't have that same mm -hmm. level of deterioration. Well, it's, it's all just so much more sensible. You know, we, there was a time in the American healthcare system when someone would come to the hospital, stay there for dramatically Weeks. longer periods of time than, than you do today. But you would go home with a couple of prescriptions and a couple of, you know, well wishes from the staff, but no one took the time to figure out, uh, do they have the resources to fill the prescriptions? Um, is there exactly anyone there right. to help them eat properly or eat at all? Mm -hmm. um, this has been, I think, just such an eye-opener to the American healthcare system. It really has, and even in the last six months, there's been tremendous literature as mm -hmm. people look to address how do we keep people from coming back mm -hmm. to the hospital, that it's not necessarily the disease process for many folks, that's the challenge, but it's all what they call the social determinants. Right. That um, dad's home alone and now he doesn't know how to cook for himself. Right. Or he's been in the hospital for, for an extended period of time and did go home, mm -hmm. but he opens the refrigerator and what happens if you're on vacation for two weeks to so the food in the fridge, right? Yeah. Well, now we have to address that issue. Well, and let's not forget that, you know, when you send home an 89-year-old, the caregiver at the other end is quite probably another 89 year old That's true. you know uh, you know the uh, we're, we're we we have we have failed historically to ensure that people can continue their recovery at home and we're just so much better at it now we are we're much better at yeah. it i've experienced this journey with my family mm -hmm. i have older uh, older mother my father's been deceased mm -hmm. about 18 years and when i think back even 18 years ago yeah. of the services that were mm -hmm. available for my dad in his last months and what's now available for my mother 18 years later, it, it's really day and night. Yeah. And I think that's important for people to recognize and that it's also mm. okay to say, you know, we need a little help at home. Right. That That is a mm. smart thing to do. It's a healthy thing to do. It's not a sign of failure. Um, we have the largest home, home health care agency in the state of Iowa. We care about you. We don't really care that the grass isn't mowed. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> and some people are embarrassed about those things. Yeah. I encourage them not to be. We're here to help you stay home and be healthy mm -hmm. and successful. Well, let's take a break here now and come back and talk specifically about the emerging role of senior services in uh, our larger portfolio of healthcare services. Wonderful. Please uh, stay tuned and we'll be right back. I use the Da Vinci robotic system because our patients have less pain, shorter hospital stays, and get back to the normal activity level sooner. The leader in robotic surgery, the Da Vinci XI and Genesis, better together. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Anderson, a family physician at the Genesis Healthplex in Moline. You know, the new school year can be a challenging time of transition. As a parent, you can ease the transition by making sure your kids are physically ready. Some tips to think about. Are your kids up to date on their immunizations? Do they need a sports physical? Make an appointment with your family doctor and screen for vision and hearing problems too. Do the school nurse and teachers know about your child's medical condition? A food allergy, asthma, or ADHD? Update them so they can safely manage any medical concerns. Have your kids been staying up late and sleeping in all summer? Establish a back-to-school sleep schedule now by gradually adjusting their sleep and wake times. Elementary school age kids need 10 to 11 hours of sleep a night. Also, review basic safety rules with your kids. Pack them a healthy lunch and start their day with a well-balanced breakfast. You can make a difference in their back-to-school success. This Genesis Health Minute is brought to you by Genesis Health Group. At heart, in our own ways, we all care. At heart, in our own ways, we all do our best. At heart, in our own ways, we all make a difference. We're individual in our strengths. And like you, we commit to something greater. We are the Genesis Cardiac Surgeons, and we're experts at heart. I love using the Da Vinci XI robotic surgical system because I can make smaller incisions with minimal scarring for my patients. The leader in robotic surgery, the Da Vinci XI and Genesis, better together. Welcome back to Genesis Sunday. I'm Ken Crokin. Joining me is Glenn Roebuck. And Glenn, before the break, you were talking about your family's journey into mm -hmm. aging. And um, we, we experienced something very similar at, at our house too when uh, I moved my, my parents in with us. And the biggest concern for me was the medications. Right. Um, the two of them were taking anywhere from 10 to 12 meds a day and none of them seemed to be being taken properly or regularly. Mm -hmm. um, we all need more services to support our, our, our parents and our older neighbors. Um, you have a resource on the Genesis Health um, website. Uh, talk about that. Sure. So one of the things we've wanted to do within Genesis is kind of be the one-stop shop for mm -hmm. people who are looking for se support for, their se for seniors, whether they're senior themselves or maybe they're looking for their, mm -hmm. for their family. We've created the uh, at genesishealth.com backslash 65 plus or backslash senior services. Mm -hmm. We, you are taken to a part of our website that links all of our senior services that we provide within Genesis. But more importantly, we've partnered with many other area community providers. It wasn't about us recreating the wheel, right. but really pulling together resources mm -hmm. that people can use. And we continue to add to this. For example, we have a great partnership with KSI, which we'll talk about in a little mm -hmm. bit, that has a variety of services, including a, a nutrition uh, mm -hmm. services that are available for seniors if meals are, are a challenge. We've recently partnered with... Uh, now how, how young can you be to get one of those meals? To, to, I got you, great news, you qualify. <laughs> 
Oh, thank goodness. All That's right. right. Always um, looking for a free meal. There you go. Mm. Um, in addition, we've partnered with Rule and Rule, who has two excellent realtors who are uh, certified in meeting the realty needs of seniors. Yeah. So everyone reaches a point and they say, you know, the four bedroom house and the three car garage mm -hmm. is going to give way to the two bedroom condo. Right. And now I need, but I need to downsize. Mm -hmm. How do I do that? In addition to the realtors who can help you with the selection of your home, of your new home, and helping you with your other mm -hmm. home. We are soon bringing on a resource that will assist you in the entire downsizing process. Everything I, that's from That's overwhelming a, to people. It's absolutely, and you know what? It becomes the barrier mm -hmm. that delays the mm -hmm. transition, which leads to the health and safety issues mm -hmm. that happen. So uh, the service we'll be bringing on, and hopefully we'll have them up and going in the next 30 days, we'll do everything from provide you a list of checklists to do mm -hmm. to come in and handle everything for you. Yeah. We also find scenarios where families are in that situation, where they have mm -hmm. to come in and they have to close up mom and dad's old home. They may not even live in town, and that is an overwhelming yeah. responsibility. Yeah. You know, I, I, we've gotten to the point at, at our household where if the kids even look appreciatively at any item in our house, we say, would you, would you like, like it? it? <laughs> yeah. Yes. I remember a time with my older in-laws after uh, many years ago, we lived in Colorado. My wife and I were very proud. Mm. We bought our first vehicle together and it was yeah. a pickup truck. And my father-in-law was thrilled because every time we went to visit, <laughs> something went in the back of the truck. Here, take this. Here, yeah. Here. So, um, by the way, if people want to get to that uh, part on the website and they're struggling to remember, uh, if you just go to www.genesishealth.com, then go to the search box and type senior services, it'll get you to the same place. Absolutely. Yeah. Another easy key is when you go to genesishealth.com and you'll see our four pictures that tend to right. rotate through. The rotator. One of those, one of those rotating pictures mm -hmm. will come up with a couple that looks to be about 65. Uh -huh. If you click on that picture, you'll go right Right excellent, to go. excellent. Now, um, we love KSI, mm -hmm. and um, you know, there's been uh, recent medical research that suggests that socialization actually contributes to longevity. Well, I can speak to this both personally and professionally because uh -huh. I've experienced this with my mother as because well. Because you're so lonely? And because I'm so lonely, <laughs> that's right. So, <laughs> clearly, you know about my work habits. Uh, mm -hmm. We can help people sustain mm -hmm. independence in an environment if we address mm -hmm. two key factors. One is regular, regular healthy nutrition. Mm -hmm. The other is avoiding isolation. Right. Now, some people are social butterflies. Mm -hmm. They love to be around people, and the fact that they can't mm -hmm. is, is that much more devastating. Other people are more mm -hmm. of the introvert and may not want to be out as much, but total isolation isn't healthy for anyone. Right. KSI, the Center for Active Seniors, Inc. in Davenport, has had a 40-year history of providing a wealth of services in the community. Mm -hmm. Genesis has been a partner of theirs for many, many years. We have recently enhanced our partnership there. We are now the sole drivers of all of the services that are taking place in their medical suite mm -hmm. at KSI. So we are continuing uh, the Monday blood pressure checks that we've done for years, as well as our Tuesday foot clinics. We also have the Genesis Home Medical Equipment Team, who's begun to uh, be there every Wednesday morning as mm -hmm. well. So if someone has a question about their device or something's not mm -hmm. working or they hear about something or they are looking to find something to, that will help them do something in their home that they're struggling with, these are the great people to talk yeah, to. Yeah. We'll and also be partnering with St. Ambrose University with this. Right, yeah, because their physician assistant program. Their physician right? assistant program, yeah. we'll be offering some free clinic time and we're hoping mm -hmm. to pull in their nurses as yeah. well. No, I, I think it's the, the other issue that comes up, Glenn, for a lot of people as they age is maybe they don't hear as well as they used to. Mm -hmm. So they're embarrassed to go out uh, and socialize with others. And um, hey, no one hears that well there. <laughs> so don't worry about it. Well, <laughs> but even more importantly than that, part mm -hmm. of KSI services is a tremendous advocacy service. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes people go without resources, Ken, mm -hmm. because they don't know there's an avenue right. to get it. Mm -hmm. So if the cost of a hearing aid, which, can, which are, mm -hmm. as they become digital, have become very expensive, mm -hmm. it seems cost prohibitive for some people. They say, oh, well, I'll, I'll just stick it out a little longer. Right. I'll just go without. There are advocates at KSI who mm -hmm. you can privately speak to, who can mm -hmm. open up doors for, for resources for mm -hmm. you and avenues where you may have benefits to help defray yeah. those costs. Well, and you know, the other service that families might be very interested in at KSI, um, the adult daycare service, yes. which is really fantastic for 
people who might be overwhelmed. Absolutely. It's one of the yeah. only certified adult day services programs mm -hmm. in the state of Iowa. Jane's Place, named after our dear friend Jane Falwell. Oh, what a love. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, offers day services for people. We mm -hmm. have families who are caring for a, uh, a mother or a father or in a some wife cases, and a son. Both, yeah. And mm -hmm. in, as part of that caregiving, they need a break to take care of other business mm -hmm. or do things. Or in some cases, we've had a spouse who's still working who needs to have a place for mm -hmm. their spouse to be during the day so it's right. safe. The day services at Jane's Place are, are a hidden treasure yeah, in this they really community. Are. They really are. And, I, mm -hmm. and ch the, the challenge with those services is they're usually not utilized in a, in a crisis situation. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes they may not be identified. Right. So I just had met actually with our health coaches yesterday mm -hmm. at Genesis Health Group and talked about this very thing as they're working with their Medicare wellness visits mm -hmm. and ensuring that there are these other services that are available to folks yeah. that the Medicare wellness visit might be for me, but I'm also caring for my wife mm -hmm. and she needs additional support or different mm -hmm. stimulation during the day or needs, even if it's just a couple days a week mm -hmm. to be out of the house. And Those are great opportunities. Speaking of socialization, you're also engaged with the uh, Quad City Times Plus 60 group. We are. We've been working with the Quad City Times mm -hmm. Plus 60 group for about a little over a year now. Mm -hmm. Genesis is their sole provider of healthcare education. Mm -hmm. Every quarter, we do an education seminar for the membership mm -hmm. at, at uh, the Quad City Times Plus 60 group. Mm -hmm. uh, I spring for a free box lunch for everybody, so there's free lunch. Yeah, uh, and and again, you can be any age to come, right? Yeah, we can get yeah. you. In. We can get you in, Ken. <laughs> so, Glenn, we have to take yet another break. Uh, but when we come back, let's uh, finish learning more about these. Um, please stay tuned. We're excited to launch the Genesis Joint Pain Institute inside our $150 million campus expansion. We truly have an orthopedic hospital inside an overall medical center. Recently, Genesis Medical Center Davenport has received the recognition for blue distinction for our spine, total joint programs, knee and hip replacement programs. The Joint Commission awarded us the gold seal approval for total knee and hip replacement. Genesis has set their standards high and it also um, strengthens the community's confidence in the safety and quality of care that we provide to every patient every day. The most soothing thing out of that whole operative experience was the anesthesiologist placing their hand on the patient pre-op and saying it's going to be okay. You know, and developing that kind of bond with the patient and really making them believe that you are there just to take care of them and get them through this is what I try to do in those few minutes. In addition, we have orthopedic certified nurses and that truly creates the most optimal patient outcomes. Being an orthopedic certified nurse means that you have met certain criteria. It just means that you are well trained in orthopedic nursing. Genesis Medical Center Davenport is very excited to collaborate with ORA to provide orthopedic surgical services to our community. This new operating room provides spacious, state-of-the-art, high technology that allows us to focus on safe quality care for all our orthopedic patients. We made overall enhancements, whether pre-admission screening process when you walk in, the greeters, the outpatient care center. We even have a coffee shop that we have from 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. in the morning for staff and visitors and patients. 
Here at Genesis, people have their ears open, they're willing to change processes, and they're willing to make the patients happier and do things better. So to me, that's why you would come here, because we're doctors that are curious, we're doctors that care, and we want the patients to do well. That's why you come here. Welcome back to Genesis Sunday. Glenn Roebuck, the uh, Director of Post-Acute Care Services for Genesis Health System. What's the one thought we'd like to leave uh, people with today? I think it's important to recognize the breadth and depth of services that we, not only we have at Genesis that can serve seniors, mm -hmm. but most importantly, the partnerships we've created in the community. Mm -hmm. Certainly, we don't expect every provider to cover every service. There's a lot of specialties in healthcare. And there's a lot of specialties in service sectors. Mm -hmm. What we've wanted to do is, and have been successful at thus far is bring people together and on a common platform. So as people go to genesishealth.com backslash senior services, you'll be having the opportunity to see a multitude of resources available mm -hmm. to help you streamline your decision-making process. Well, and as you pointed out during the break to me, most people will wait, as I did, for there to be a crisis right. before you get into this. And um, uh, smarter than I would go to this website now and say, you know, it's a matter of time before I'm going to need additional services. I should start thinking about it now. I couldn't agree more. Too often people wait till they have a crisis. We have people that come to the hospital and they don't have a physician. Right. We need to move beyond that and also think about that time. When will someone need additional support mm -hmm. and assistance? We have resources, myself as well as others, who are available to help people both within Genesis and within our partners to make sure people get the right care they need in the right place at the right time to avoid crisis. And as we say on our website, live long and love life. Yeah. No, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful motto and, um, again, the. It, it preparation is key for this, you know. Um, uh, talk to your primary care doctor, you know, how do you think I'm doing, doctor? Uh, and start to make plans for, you know, when's the time for me to think about getting out of a big house and getting into, when, when is my balance going to threaten my, my well-being? Mm -hmm. uh, those are kind of issues that um, everybody needs to think about before they find themselves lying on the kitchen floor. Exactly, and, and yeah. for each person it's a little different. There, right. are, there are those who don't want, who can stay in a larger home mm -hmm. and that they really don't want to leave, but they can bring in support sure. to help them, and that's yeah. okay. There are others who may mm -hmm. be in different financial circumstances and just need to make a different shift. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing that's very important, and, and I do worry about this for my generation and younger, younger people as well, is it's never too early to, to plan financially for your retirement. Yes. And for your senior health care. Excellent. Well, great advice, Glenn Roebuck. Uh, thank all of you for joining us this week on Genesis Sunday. We'll see you next week.